Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're taking a look at another of the cool Cisco commands. Today we're going to take a look at the reload command and specifically the additional options that you have with that command. So you're most likely aware of the reload command. It does exactly what it says. It goes ahead and reloads the Cisco device. does this immediately after you confirm the command. Cisco iOS is going to give you a little bit of a safeguard. It's going to come back and question and say, hey, are you sure that you want to reload this device? As soon as you hit enter or Y for yes, it'll go ahead and reload the device. It goes without saying that this is probably not something you want to be doing in your production network without a good reason and most likely a change control. But we're not here today to look at the plain Jane reload, although we will touch on that real quickly. What I want to show you is some of the additional options that you get with reload that you may not be aware of that are actually pretty powerful and very useful. And if you go ahead and type reload and then the question mark at the command line, you will get a list of these. Again, these may vary by platform and or iOS version. But the ones we're going to look at today are going to be at, in, cancel and line which is actually reason and it does show this in the help so this slide is from the Cisco command reference documentation and it goes over the reload command you can see there are a grip of options that you have with this and here's the ones that we're gonna look at today this is for your own reference and I will have a link to this command reference documentation I'm not gonna go over these right now because we are going to look at each of these with a little bit of detail in the upcoming slides all right so here's a plain Jane reload and you will need to have privilege level 15 by default in order to issue this command. So from privileged exec mode you're going to issue the reload command and iOS will give you a little bit of a safeguard like I said it's gonna say do you want to go ahead and do this. One thing to keep in mind though is that anything that's within the brackets in iOS is the default so if you simply hit enter and a lot of times we do this we hit enter without reading it's going to take that as a yes and it's gonna go ahead and reload your device. Since reloading device can be a career impacting decision you want to be careful with this. So basically to get out of this you can type any character other than Y or enter. The obvious one is N and that will cancel the reload. But uh, without any options it goes ahead and does this immediately right after you say you know yes or N. And then after reload you can do a show version here. I've got piped uh, just to begin with the word uptime and it will show that the system was returned by a reload. If this was you know a system error or something else it would show up here. This is a clean reload. Okay and here's the first of our options. We're going to take a look at this reload in. There's two options uh, reload in and reload at. Both of them allow you to schedule a reload for a future time which is very very handy. There's just a slight difference in how they handle this reload. Reload in lets you specify in a certain amount of time whereas reload at which we'll see in just a little bit you can specify the exact date time. You can get the same results with both it's just a matter of easy use. What reload in does is it gives you the option to set the reload in the immediate future is how I would use this. You, like I said you could use both but this is generally when you're going to use for the immediate future. So you say reload in 10 which means go ahead and reload the device but give me 10 minutes. After 10 minutes go ahead and reload it. Where this comes in really handy is when you're doing configuration. A lot of places I work at, a lot of engineers will do this with any configuration changes they make, especially if it's remote. So if you're logged in remotely to a box, say you're in Minneapolis and you're logged into a box in Australia, what you really don't want to do is make a configuration change that locks you out of that box and then requires somebody to get up in the middle of the night and drive out to that site to reload the box to fix your issue. What you can do is prior to doing your configuration, you can say reload in and 30 minutes. So you set it for some time that's going to be greater than the amount of time you think you're going to use for your configuration. It goes ahead and schedules that and says, you know, in 30 minutes it's going to reload. You go in and do your configurations and in the middle of your configurations, like crap, I just locked myself out. I changed the IP address. I screwed up AAA, whatever. The good news about that is that if you haven't written the configuration, which is, you know, the second part of this, don't write it till you're done and you're happy with the configuration, is that even though you're locked out, once that clock hits 30 minutes, minutes, that device is going to go ahead and reload and it's going to bring up the startup configuration which if you have not written your configuration will be the old configuration and you'll have access to the box again. So a lot of guys do use this in the field whenever they're making configuration changes. I tend not to because my problem is that when I use it I forget to cancel the reload which is a command we'll look at the end there. I've had that happen where I've gone in and done a reload in 15, gone made my changes, everything works, I go get a soda, come back and and the device has reloaded. It's not such a big deal because it'll reload to the old configuration. It's great to use and a lot of people use it all the time. I only use it when it's going to be a really dicey configuration. But anyways, you can see down here, I just did a show clocked, so the clock here, it says reload in 15, so then it's gonna say reload schedule in 15 minutes by console. We're on the console here. 
and you go ahead and say yes. So you can see here that after you go through all this, it's going to give you a log message that says the reload is requested for 1623, and if my math is correct, 1608 plus 15 minutes is 1623. One slight gotcha, if you want to say that, with this command is that you can't specify seconds. It either has to be in whole minutes or in hours and minutes. If you don't read this closely, you might do a reload in 730 and think that you're going to get a reload in 7 minutes and 30 seconds. What's actually happening there is you just scheduled the reload for seven hours and 30 minutes. Not a big deal unless it's one of those cases where you've done this prior to doing a configuration. During the configuration, you lock yourself out and you said, oh, that's fine. I set this for seven minutes and 30 seconds. So, you know, another couple minutes, it's going to reload. Actually, it's going to reload in seven hours. Either do minutes in whole minutes, or you can go ahead and do hours with fractions of hours, but you can't do seconds with this command. And just show you this guy in action. Here we go. We'll issue a reload. If I can just type it in and the question mark, there you go. So if we reload in 15 and hit enter, then, well, okay, I don't need to save my configuration. It's going to ask you, are you sure? Yes. And so now we should get a message. And right here, we see that in another 15 minutes, uh, this is going to reload. So if we do a show clock, we should see that this is actually 15 minutes in the future. And I'll show you that if you think we're doing 15 minutes and 25 seconds actually going to be 15 hours and 25 minutes so keep that in mind this brings us to my favorite reload option which is reload at this is very similar to the reload in command except that you can specify a date and a time so in this case you can go ahead and say and reload at 5 p.m. on the 4th of July and it's going to go ahead and set that for you. This is really good for change controls or setting something for a specific time in the future. Keep in mind anything that you can do with the reload at command, you could do with the reload in command. It's just that you would have to do the date time operation to figure out the exact number of uh, minutes or hours and minutes from the time that you issue the command in order to use the end. This is a whole lot more human friendly. It's basically using a calendar. There is a limitation. You can only do 24 days in the future. In this case, I have reload at you know 5 o'clock on the 4th of July. The current date is June 10th, so that's within the 24-day window. If I were to specify January 4th, it wouldn't take that because it's outside the 24-day window. I don't think that you're going to run into too many times where you're configuring reloads for more than 24 days in advance, but do keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the reload at command in action and reload at and we'll invoke the help and it tells you the time and if you just hit enter here it's going to use today's date uh, we're going to go ahead and specify oh 24 I'm sorry 4th of July and same old same old with confirmation it shows you it's set for the 4th of July 2010 that's in 575 hours from now and it gives you this handy dandy log message as well a couple of notes with the reload at command if you do not specify the day it will go ahead and use the current day and we can show that here if I just up arrow what that command I just did hit enter yes and it's going to use oh, Friday June 11th my time is off it's actually Thursday June 10th oh interesting okay so it's actually very smart uh, this is kind of cool that it did this it's past 1500 on June 10th it's going to set this for the next day's date which is tomorrow so it says well if you're scheduling something for a reload at 5 p.m. it's already past 5 p.m. today so I'm gonna assume that you mean tomorrow way to go iOS you are smarter than I am you bastard the second bit here has popped up a couple times generally with NTP but I've seen this on devices where you're not running NTP I'll let you read this on your own basically if you get this message here the date and time must be set first and your date time is set uh, you do a show clock to verify that and you have an asterisk before that that generally means that NTP is not synchronized um, for whatever reason it did this with the clock set as well so just go ahead and issue the clock set command again and do a show clock and if that asterisk is gone then you should be golden here and you'll be able to uh, schedule this but I have seen this pop up a couple of times